Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, another episode of 94 Feet Podcast. Your boy Big Zeke in the building. I'm here with my brother Dre. What's good, everybody? Glad to be back here with my brothers talking basketball. I'm also here with my other enthusiastic brother, PC. What's good, good people? It's a pleasure to be in the building with my brother Dre. <laughs> wow. That's how we started to show off. That's fine with me. And my other brother to the side of me. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't think that's necessary. I mean, I do have a name, sir. But that's fine. You don't have to use it. It's okay. only three of us here. That's fine. Like I said, you don't have to use it. Everybody knows I'm right next to you, except for the people who are listening on the podcast. Not seeing. But hey, this needs to hear anybody, there. anybody who's been listening to us that's knows three of us. Here, and if I there. mention so, one by so name, about, and then I say, well, the so then what about the, the new people? Me. So what about the new people? They just in the dark? No, anybody who's listening knows three of us. I'm not saying, though, this is the new people. They don't know that. They knew. It's cool. Don't worry about it. So, anyways, let's move on to the injury report. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's cool. You know, uh, injury report: no significant injuries. Um, none. None. Whatsoever. None whatsoever. You sure about that? Do you know something I don't? Woj. No, you know something I don't. Please inform us. All right. Cool. Anyways. Um, we're gonna move around to the shoot around topic. Um, in season tournament, the first round is about to end on Tuesday. What do you guys think so far? Like, have your minds changed? Have your opinions changed about the in season tournament? In season tournament for me was always a cash grab, so I mean, I don't I think the game would have been fine without it, but again, to be able to go to Vegas for a weekend to be able to watch your favorite stars and and the, and the championship is in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So two weeks from today is the championship. Um, players are starting to take it seriously because I think what it does is it motivates, it pushes, uh, and it also gives you, it still goes into your win loss record. So uh, I've been to a couple of the Bucks games on a Tuesday and a Friday, and they've been really competitive games, really good games. Um, I, th I think the league can do without it. Um, and at the end of the day, the championship cup, I think will be treated a lot like the all-star cup or all-star game, where it's just a personalized accolade. It won't matter. No one's going to look back and say, Oh my God, the Milwaukee bucks won the in season championship cup. No one cares. This is a league about rings and championships. So that championship cup. Cool. Great. I like it, but I can do without. That's just me. Mm. Casey. You say what again? Wow. The championship tournament. <laughs> I'm gonna get on this nose. Well, well, today. I see. Hey. You know, I'm burning you payback. But you are quite fond of it. First round has been a little bit of shocking to me, you know. To see the Lakers are four and zero with the Bucks four and up. Is they three and oh? three and zero? Three, three and zero. Last games are uh, this coming up Tuesday for the first. Round. Um, Denver's out of it. I didn't understand how teams that I thought would be at the top are not at the top in the end season tournament. So I guess the long haul of the season shall determine a lot. This is just a short term. Has you has your opinion changed about the NC in season tournament though? I'm oh, you was building up to that. My fault. Go ahead. So what I was going to say was I wasn't a fan of it at first, but now I'm kind of a little bit on board with it because it kind of making the games a little more interesting to start the season. Is that only because the Lakers are in the first place? No, it's because the Bucks are three <laughs> just and kidding, I'm just kidding. Well, the Lakers are four and zero, oh, so the, the the Lakers are, are are in first in their division for in season tournament in their group. And the Bucks and, and the somebody Bucks. else too, though. New Orleans, the New Orleans. Bucks, well, Orlando. Let me, well, let me go over this real quick. Like for the Eastern Conference, the so like I said before, we have games coming up on Tuesday. Um, so like Indiana's already in it, but let me talk about these eliminated teams. You got Toronto, Chicago, Washington. And you got Detroit. So, like, as far as, like, East B, which is the Milwaukee one, I think they play on Tuesday. Um, the Knicks play on Tuesday. Miami plays on Tuesday. 
Charlotte plays on Tuesday, but they're one and two, so they can only come out as two and two. And then, um, so really, the Bucks are going to clinch. The, yeah, they're going regardless. To clinch. The Bucks yeah. are going to clinch. They haven't yet, but they're going to clinch. But the I Lakers think, are the Lakers have clinched. Yeah, but the Miami. I mean, the Western Conference. So when is a little you say bit more clinch, what if they clinch the first round? They're in it. They're in. They're the, in the. They're they're going to compete for the championship cup. No, Vegas. no. So another. So they're, it's the quarterfinal. <laughs> It's the quarterfinals. It says here clinched in season tournament group. Yeah, they they clinched their group and then they have a quarterfinals. Yeah, then they have a semifinals and they have a championship. Yeah, and that's so, all in Vegas. No, the right? only thing is in Vegas is a championship. Okay. Okay. Well, so, that's interesting because that means next week, this week and next week, we're playing quarterfinals, is what you're saying? Because think on the about fourth it. And the fifth. Okay. December 7th and 8th, 9th is championship week. For who? For in season tournament, it's in Vegas on the seventh, eighth, and ninth. That's in two weeks. It's so just, it's just the ninth. It's just the ninth. Is it just the ninth? So there's nothing. Well, it's you know how the NBA does. It's NBA weekend, and I only know that because I'm always in Vegas. But it's NBA weekend, December seventh through the ninth, and the championship game is on the ninth. I mean, I still think it's too confusing for a uh, casual fan. Right, like if you know, in the floors, I think you all saw up close and personal on uh, the other day. Floors are hideous. Uh, the Bucks look like the most basketball floor of them all, but I mean, I've been like the Bucks floor. I still don't, but you know, it is what it is. Shout out to the I, uh, the Lakers who are probably going to win the in season tournament. You think so? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I'm very interested to see what's going to happen with the in season tournament. I think that the NC tournament has. Um, has there's hype at the beginning of the season and usually these first four or six weeks we you know you kind of pick and find stories stuff happens you talk about it but i think this in season tournament has given up a lot give us a little bit more motive i mean money is always a motive for the players but for us fans i think it's getting a little it's hype and it's, it's interesting you can see players getting hyped up about it um, so I, I, I thought this very interesting. Yeah, I thought it was very interesting. And, and to clarify, the quarterfinals are December 4th and 5th, the semifinals are the 7th in Vegas, and the championship is the 9th in Vegas. So there'll be two semifinal games in Vegas on December 7th, and the championship on Saturday, December 9th in Vegas. Oh, you're right, because the final four go. Yeah, yeah, final three. No, you're right, final four. You're well, right, you're right, you're right. Three. And then the quarterfinals are the fourth and fifth, as you mentioned. So it'll be interesting, man. You know, I the Bucks tend to do good and stuff like this, but I don't want that championship cup. I don't want that consolation prize. I don't know. I, I feel like our um I feel like with the Eastern Conference they'll do good, but it'll be very interesting to see well, how they'll pan out because they'll end up they'll playing like Boston or Philadelphia, Indiana. Philadelphia. I think Indiana, which they did beat us. So um, it'll be interesting, but the teams like Indiana, who I don't see, they're four and zero. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying for them to go four and zero now, but like, do you see them actually making the playoffs? Let me you tell you something. Making the NCAA tournament. Let me tell you something, man. Tyrese Halliburton is having a freaking incredible year, and folks better stop sleeping on the Pacers. I'm not saying that they're gonna go and win a championship, but the the um, Indiana Pacers, the Sacramento Kings, these sleeper teams that we all may always sleep on because they know that they may or may not have a true championship pathway. They are taking this in season tournament seriously. So I don't think it's a given, but I think LeBron shines and stuff like this. That just think about his all star games, think about, you know, everything. Now, granted, the Pacers are only sixth in regular seating. But, you know, they're beating the teams in their conferences. So time will tell. But, again, the, the in-season tourney, I mean, it's great because it will be the first. But I, I, I'm I'm here for titles. So, Bucks, if you win it, don't get complacent. Do you? Uh, well, I'll say this. Like you mentioned Indiana. Remember Are you, you looking say, at that team? Remember you say it's championship or bust. Does that count? Was well, championship <laughs> or bust. No. The Bucks? Nah. No, it does not. It's looking like a bust. <laughs> that don't count? No. No. And the fact that if it if they win the championship in the tournament championship and then lose the NBA finals, the season was still horrible. 
You think so? Yes. But that's, that's a victory. Victory for who? For them? It ain't a, that's not even a victory they for won the, the city. First, they won the first NBA in-season tournament. That's not even a victory for the city. That's a victory for them specifically because they're getting paid. I, I, I think it's a victory for the city because you'll be able to say you're the first. Right? Because here's the thing. It's not going anywhere, right? Like the Austin, it's, it's not going nowhere. As long as Adam Silver is in charge and it generate, because Vegas tickets are sold out okay, already. Let me just tell you, put that out you there. Brought, you brought up something very interesting. You said it's not going nowhere. No. So you think this is going to be going on forever? Oh, absolutely. I do not. A oh, I do not. I think this is going to go on until they find a team to put in Vegas. Well, that's happening. I mean, as soon as LeBron retires, him and Shaq will put their money together and but, get a team. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, until that has happened, I don't think this is going to continue. I disagree because you think about it's it generates money. And for rookie, here's why. For rookies who don't make no money to be able to get $500,000 bonus for winning? What? Do you know what that does to a rookie's check? 500,000? Yeah. The, the winners, I believe they said each, the player, each player gets 500,000. Not to split. Each player you sure about that? Yeah. Let, let, let's uh, it's let, a lot of money. Let's fact mm -hmm. check. NBA got it. I mean, that's the thing. Like the, the pair, the players who aren't. I think Dane made a good point. He was like, for the players who aren't, you know, here on a ten day contract, or they're here just for a, a short time, not a, they're here for a good time, not a long time. They can like, oh, five hundred thousand. I'm gonna start playing my butt off. I'm gonna start doing what I need to do to not only stay on this team, but just to get this money. And that's what they do. They have to play to get this money. Like Dre talking about these rookies, you talking about guys who didn't get picked up in the first round or who weren't the who weren't a lottery pick. Mm -hmm. So they getting they get they getting that five hundred thousand is gonna help them out tremendously. Now is uh Uncle Sam Hold gonna on, knock let me, you, let me, let me tap say you this. over the head? Yes, he is. Players <laughs> on the losing team in the quarterfinals receive fifty thousand dollars. Players and think about it, that's for their charity too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Players on a team that loses in the semifinals get a hundred thousand dollars. Players on the team that loses in the championship get two hundred thousand dollars. Players on a team that wins the championship they get five hundred thousand dollars apiece. Now that might be a lot of money, but if you are a scrub like Green on the Bucks who doesn't pass the ball, who just likes to shoot, that's what you're here for. That's but that five hundred k for him. That's a big deal because there's only some players making two million. I mean, it's probably gonna be like two fifty at the you know, Uncle Sam. Yeah, but still, that's two fifty for bouncing a ball for one additional day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's a win-win for me. This isn't going anywhere. The players will get behind it because oh. it's a cash grab. And don't forget, the NBA players love Las Vegas. Let us not act like they it, don't. I don't think it's gonna be continued. Well, we'll I, see. We'll see. Um, um real quick, I, I want to say this. Well, the Bucks did win. Um but I want to give a shout out because we're near the mid season point, and I want to give a shout out to the teams that nobody expected to be doing it. Can right? I, her, so, is it what? what? It's on the agenda. Is it? Oh, I didn't see that, man. Relax, did. man. Dang. It's in your agenda's uh, oh. ten minutes before the show. <laughs> well, if you just take a quick Nine look minutes. at them, <laughs> if you take a quick look at them, they'll be there. I mean, I can't Whether stop my workshop. You, you know, can't stop your what? I can't stop being in church to look at your uh, late emails. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Anyway. It takes, so, we have to do that um, at least once a day. So the rookies are struggling. The rookies are struggling. Uh, Scoo Henderson has been assigned to the G League for conditioning because he just came back from injury, ankle injury. Conditioning. Um, I'll call Cap, first of all. I'll call Cap. He's averaging 8.8 .8 a game. 2.2 rebounds, 4.6 assists. He's shooting 36% from the from the field goal range, and then he's shooting 9.5 from three point range. What are your thoughts on this? Is this just a guy trying to get, you know, his feet? He's trying to get, you know, acclimated to the NBA, or is this a bust? Didn't he come off an injury? He's hurt. Yeah, he's gonna. That's why they sent him to G League for conditioning. Give him time to get conditioned. Did you, did you see my? Did you see my statistics that I just said? To you? I did. So what? What do you mean? So what? I mean, he's shooting nine percent from three point range. He's shooting thirty six percent from the field. Stop! Stop shooting from the three point line. From the field, he's shooting thirty six percent. I've seen worse. I've seen worse. So here's the thing: the pressure to play in the NBA is. Is he a bust? 
Or I don't think he's a bust. Bust. I think you got to give him but a little bit of time. if you're coming off an injury and they send him, him time, man. And they sending him to the G League, that's that's a different story compared to G- you playing and then he gets sent I to the G League. I think it's a combination. No, two things can be Jimmy true. Butler's partners playing in the G League two, right now. So what? So then, so then, yeah, how you gonna ask us a question and not so, let us respond? And you know, what, you're right. You know, what, you're right. Number Jesus, one, number one, it's part of the show. So number two. <laughs> so what about when Chris? I, I, I'm not gonna say y'all So what about wrong. when Chris I'm Middleton got assigned to the G League? He was clearly coming off a major injury. So what? He, injury's he, injury. He sprained his ankle. Oh, come on, man. You're being too judgmental right now. Man. How you don't know how bad it is? Some angle. Some ankle sprains are just as bad as a break or worse. Are you telling me, looking at his stats, this is just, hey, we need you to get, this is just conditioning or is this, you know, a bust? Because to be honest with you, I was looking at school like, this is going to be your rookie of the year. Oh, no. Did you see Victor Wamiyama? This is before Victor Wings fan. I'm saying off top, well, let's go to third. The first three draft picks, Wingspan, Scoop, I think his name is Miller. I think you're talking about Giddy. Who? Dude in OKC that's in a little bit of trouble right now. No, he was a rookie last year. I'm talking about. Really? Yeah. Right. Scoop, I just told you who they were. Wingspan, Scoop, and um, Brandon Miller. Well, if you thought Scoop was going to be rookie of the year over Victor, that's just your own bad judgment because no one thought that. Okay. Everybody knew that Victor would be coming in killing it. Right. You know that. Stop it. When we talked about it, I said he was going to be good. You're you the said, only one. No, you said he was like, well, you know, give some time. You do, I man. Was like, what about this? And the kid is balling out. I'm and the kid is balling out. out. Balling out is hard. I think he's getting used to things. I think he's using his wingspan. I think he's blocking shots because he's seven foot ten. He should be blocking shots and doing all the stuff he's doing. Speaking of which, I don't see it on your thing, but since it's related, what do you is think, it related? What do you think about? Is it related? Yeah. What do you think about? And we'll go back to your topic. What do you think about uh, San Antonio's coach? His name. What do you think about Popovich asking the crowd not to boo Kawhi Leonard at the Spurs? I wonder if it's right to this quick. But, but it's related, did, though, because we're talking about Victor Wingspan. So it, I'll let it ride. <laughs> My thing is about <laughs> – I, 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 to, be, to be honest with you, I, when I first seen it, I was like, this is kind of corny. Because <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was real. It was giving high school teacher, hey, guys, show him some respect. Show him some respect here, why, guys. Why is it corny? Because he he had an opposing team, you boo people like that. He did win championships there, right? What they got to do anything? You think we're not gonna boo LeBron? You think we're not gonna boo? Respect? You think we're not gonna boo Ray Allen when he come to town? They don't boo. They didn't boo LeBron when he went to Cleveland. This yeah, time. This time. This time. Like, the, don't sit here and tell, don't sit here and tell me not to boo somebody. And why do you, Why do you think they didn't boo him? Because what he did? What? Brought the he city a championship. Okay then. So, so why wouldn't they do the same thing for Kawhi? Because he left. He bought them a championship, though, right? But he left. He bought them he two played a, he, he, he played a major role in that championship. Let, let's cut the crap here. Um, <laughs> number one, they already had two championships before he got there. Number two. So what? Uh, that last one, they probably could have won without him. What? I'm saying that. You tripping. I'm saying you better put some respect on Kawhi, Dave. I, what I'm saying is this. Don't tell me not to boo somebody when you know they're on a supposing team. That's part of the game. I didn't think his feelings was hurt because they were booing him. I, I guess I'm going to say this. For a coach, Greg Popovich, as tough as he is, <laughs> he he has a lot. Greg Popovich, to be on the opposing team for me, is too buddy-buddy. I think he – um Like going to hug he, LeBron in the locker room when they won the title. Like, bro, you don't have to do that. Your team just lost. And to tell – and here's my thing, bless you. And to tell, um, and to tell, uh, and to, and to tell people that pay their money, their hard earned money, um, not to boo to me is foul. Like, I pay my money, I can see if I'm yelling vulgar stuff like they do in that racist town of Boston. Right, I can see if we're doing that, but if I'm just booing him to distract him from free throws, Texas could be a little rowdy too. They absolutely can. Every fan, they absolutely can. 
But to boo him, to distract him, I didn't think was nothing wrong with it. And Pop, sit down, man. I get it. You're the godfather of the Spurs. It's your town. You're very opinionated. And I appreciate your opinion, especially on politics at times. But you don't tell people that's paying their money that they stop booing that's classless. Like, what? That is for someone who, who has won you championships. That's classless. It is not. <laughs> I don't think it's classless. If he, if it was just, I think it's emotional, but I don't think it's classless. Just, just say, like, let's just say – Trying to think of another player. Drew Holiday. What? Drew Holiday. No, I'm just saying that went there and then won the championship and came Drew Holiday. Drew, Ho- Drew Holiday's gonna come back here and play. He- They're not gonna boo him. We're not gonna boo him. They're not gonna We're boo him. Gonna I'm not. not. Uh, you know what's you know, I'm not. Because hey, he was a fan favorite here. Hey, you know he what? Hey, check this out. But it's he didn't different. ask for a trade. It don't it's matter. Different. Uh, it's what it's the different. Bucks wanted to I'm gonna do tell you with him. why it's different. I'm gonna tell you why it's different. I'm gonna okay. tell you why it's different. Okay. Because that's um, that's a total different category. It's a different segment. James Harden. James Harden when he when goes he goes to, to Philly he getting booed. He when he goes booed. to Brooklyn he getting booed. He, he getting should. booed. Ben he Simmons should. when he goes to Philly he's getting booed. When he goes to Houston he's getting booed. Yeah, he's getting booed. Why? Because he asked to leave out of these places. Kawhi Leonard asked to leave out of San Antonio. But Boo that man. At, but he already Boo won championships. Man. Boo that man. But he also left stubbornly. He left refusing to play, refusing to come in games, any kind of bad mouth pop on his way out. So I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. Did you hear it come out of his mouth? Bro, he did He did press conferences, and he was literally indirectly blaming pop for his injury for trying to play him too much. This is what Kawhi said. This is what Kawhi said. This is after uh, Zaza Pachula stepped on his ankle. But anyway, yeah, I brought it up again. But anyway, Pop, let it go, man. Let these fans who pay their money. But you do have to recognize this man did bring your city a championship. You don't have to be too hard on him. You do. I mean, I'm sure fans recognized it. I'm mean, like you said before. They're not saying obscenities to him. They're just booing him. Man. That's part of the game. So, <laughs> so back to your question about Scoot. I think it's a disappointment considering he was a top draft pick, but I don't think you could throw him the towel on him just yet. You got to give him a chance to develop. You got to get him a chance to get his mental right. You got to give him a chance to get his conditioning down packed. That's what the G League is for. Now, granted, he's not playing like Victor. He's not playing like Chet Holmgren. He's not playing like Thompson nor Jordan Hawkins. So he's not even in the top 10 caliber of rookies right now. I would say if he goes this season, and he doesn't step it up in the second half of the season, then you can have conversations on is he a bust because all the players that came after him are all doing better. I'm calling him now, bust. Anthony Edwards bust or bust? What do you mean Anthony Edwards bust? Anthony Edwards from um, – You're talking about um, – Anthony Bennett, I'm sorry. Anthony, Anthony Bennett bust or no, no, worse? No, no, I'm just saying, like, I don't know if – I don't see you being a star in this league. I see you being a role player. That makes him a bust because he's a role player. When you're top, when you're top five, there's a lot of top five rookies that sucked. And what happened? They're called bust. Was Darko Malachek a bust? Yeah. Was Porzingis a bust? Yeah. Porzingis is dominating. Right, what are you talking about? He's helping. I'm sorry, come on, come on, come on. Are you sure you want to go down the road? Or he's he's giving Boston a near double double. Now, what year is this for him? But it doesn't matter. What career, year is this for him? So is he the start of that team? He's not even the start of that team. He's the third option. So here's the thing. He's the third option. Here's why I disagree with you. To me, if you have a long career, you can't be a bust. If you've had a yeah, long can. career, yeah, no, you can. can't. Because no, you expect, can't. Look, if the expectations are here, okay, and you don't meet those expectations. Bust. Hmm. Bust. Giannis can't be a bust. Well, Giannis, Giannis can't be a bust. Giannis can't be a bust because he also wasn't a top five draft pick. Exactly. That's my point. Giannis was a breakout star like Draymond Green, like Tom Brady, if we're going sports, like NFL, like Aaron Rodgers, right? These were all players that had it and they grew into that greatness. Yeah, that's what so, I'm saying. So that's not a fair assessment. You the, can't say no, they're I'm not saying. a buzz my when they weren't is, top five. Exactly. My point is if there's an expectation when you're a top five pick, 
If you're a top five pick, there's an expectation. If I you don't do not meet the expectations, then you're a, bu- you're a bust. I don't, think top 10. I don't think there's an expectation. Top, top 10. No. Top 10 got high expectations. No. I, I disagree. It, I think top three has high top expectations. Top five. I think four and five, depending on the year, is like, and we'll take best available. Because the last <laughs> great draft, in my opinion, was 0-3. That was the last great draft. There hasn't been any. Let's be honest. Outside of the first, the, the first three, you're like, who is this? Who is that? Because if you look at the NBA ladder right now, the number three rookie right now is barely averaging 11 points a game, but he is averaging a double double. The number three pick is averaging 13 points a game. So here's the number name. five is averaging eight points a game. So to call these players a bust, we, we we are we are way too hard on people. Give them a chance to grow and develop. Here's my thing. Check this out. Check this out. Right, we got top. You oh, said all three. You full name me. Yeah. Oh, I'm fine. You good? I'm good. So we got top five. <laughs> this is your old three. Go ahead. LeBron, Darko. Camelo Anthony, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, Wade. Top five. Out of the four, they're superstars. I don't know what the hell happened to Darko. Out there. of those full five? I'm sorry, out of those five. Four three superstars. of them are superstars. Four of those are superstars. Three of them are superstars. Who are, who's not? Malachek, obviously, and Chris Bosh. He's not a superstar? No, he's not. Wow. Chris no, Bosh isn't? No. Wow. He Two was. and a half wow. men. No. Wow. Two and a half men in Miami. Here you go. Here you go. I'm like, was he was he the forget was he the forgotten player on old Miami? Is he was he the was he the was he the, was see, he the forgotten, see you're about to contradict yourself? Uh, uh, you know why you about to get, superstar? Yes, he was the forgotten superstar. Yeah. So so the Miami years does that make him a so, bust? Okay. Because he wait a minute, let me get does that make him a bust because he wasn't the Chris Bosch in Toronto? Uh-uh. Before he got there, he was 20 and 10. Does it make him a bust because he wasn't the star in Toronto when he got with Miami? He was the star in Miami. I mean, in Toronto. Does Listen to the question. Does it make Bosch a bust because he wasn't no. the star in Miami that he was in Toronto? No. Okay. So then why is it that my man from Boston, Porzingis, is a bust because he wasn't killing his rookie year? He wasn't killing his rookie year. He was no, he was killing his rookie year. So then why is he a bust? Because he was injured. Are you gonna be finished? I'm gonna let you finish, but but your argument doesn't make sense. Well, because if be that's finished, the case, no, well, I'm just doing what you did to me earlier. If that's the case, Grant Hill's a bust. Grant Hill's not a bust. He's okay, not, then he's not it's the same player. situation. Okay. He's not a Hall of Fame player. So I got some, some no, let him finish. I got, a cu- I got a couple situations. Think about this then. All right. When TJ Ford was drafted by the Bucks. He'll be here next week, by the way. In the city? He is. Uh, I will be. Never was, mind. Did he have high? <laughs> did, did he have high expectations? I don't think so. He's yeah, he did. No, he wasn't. He was like he was a top. 11. He was a top pick. He was number eight. He was he a top was ten. Okay. So, he's so, so top then five. I say a top ten. They they had was Kirk Heinrich. He had an okay high, career. Was he was he had high expectations? For he sure him? did. What draft pick was he? He was seven to the Bulls, right? Yep. Okay. So yeah, man. Hold on a second. Tell me, tell me. You said top ten, right? I said top five. You said top three. All these people you're naming are also those top five. So, yeah, I don't have high expectations for them. Heinrich, he had a good career in Kansas. DJ Ford, we didn't have high expectations for him to come no, out? No, he, he was the point guard for the future. But he wasn't like, I'm going to take this team to another level. That's, I never looked at him like that. That's how we are looked at him. Are you kidding me? That's I'm how the city looked at him. That's how everybody looked at him. He was a high draft pick. Shout out to TJ Ford. Miami took Dwayne Wade at number six. Was he high expectations? Number five. Yeah, five. Mm-hmm. Yes, top five. No, because you know what? Let's be honest. And I remember me and Kesey talked about this the night before the draft, and I said D Wade is going five. Mm-hmm. Kesey said D Wade is not going that high. Mm-hmm. Coming out of college, other than the Final Four, he couldn't shoot. There was not a lot of hype on Dwayne Wade. It wasn't until the Final Four. It wasn't until the, the NCAA tournament, and then the uh, D Wade told thing you was, how good he Wade was. Shoot. Like I knew that. I had Marquette. I always went to the games. Like D Wade couldn't shoot, so it was like, well, he's good, but he can't shoot. But I so knew he wasn't. Like, I knew he was different because he was freakish. If you went to a game and you seen him play, he had NBA athletic ability. Yeah. So you knew everything else would fall in line once he got there. But my thing is, if you're a top five pick. 
there is an expectation. And if you don't meet the expectation, you're a bust. Like, so if, so going back to what you were saying, talking about all these people like Porzingis fan, you brought up Porzingis. Porzingis' first year, he was killing it, running the city. Then after that, injury, 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 traded him. He went to Washington. It did. Andrew Bogut, number I think one. He went somewhere else. That's a bust. That's so a bust. That's a bust. So my thing about that that's is that's a bust. That's a bust. But he's a world champion. The only, Stop, oh, the only reason, the only he reason he won a title with Golden State. I know State, he won a title. He, so, he was a critical no, he piece. The only reason his career in Milwaukee changed was because of that freakishly a- accident when he failed. That's, yep, that's that's a personal problem. I'm that's wrong with it, bro. You are whoa. You are hard on people. We just talked about this two weeks ago about Hall of Fame. One of the people we talked about was Garrett was uh, Grant Hill, not a Hall of Famer. And why is Grant Hill not a Hall of Famer? Because he was injury prone. Well, what does that have to do with being a bust? Those are two different things. There's a lot of great role they players. They both people out to not great basketball is players. Robert but good basketball. Bust? Is Robert Ori a bust? He was never a top five pick. Okay. Okay. Give me a top five pick. Okay. Z. Okay. Andrew Bogan is a good example. Darren, bust. Williams. Darren Williams. What number? Three. Darren Williams. I want to. I don't want to say a bust. He went three. Chris Paul went four. Okay. I can see why. I can see why. Raymond Felton went five. That's a bust. What? That's a bust. Charlie Villanueva went six. That's a bust. Oh, yeah. You don't have to go over his stats. That's a bust. Bust? <laughs> Anthony Bennett, Greg Oden, Sam Bowie, Kwame Brown. Those are. Those are busts. Those are horrific busts. Jason Williams. Those are horrific Duke, busts. A bust. Even though his injury killed him. Christian Leitner a bust? Christian Leitner wasn't a bust. Christian Leitner, I think, bust. He wasn't a bust. He was, he was okay. Okay. He was a bust. Michael Kidd, Gilchrist, 2000, bust. 2004 season. Think about this draft class. That was Dwight Howard, number one. Mm-hmm. Emeka Okafor, number two. Bust. Whatever happened to him? Bust. Remember he dropped his jersey because he didn't want to play for Port, uh, Philly? No. Uh-uh. Remember at the press conference he got drafted? He held up his jersey and just dropped it at the end of the press conference, like oh, something like that. Bust because he knew he was going to be traded. Yeah, whatever happened to him? Ben Gordon, bust. who? Ben Gordon was not a bust. Bust due to injuries, due to injuries, but it's still bust. Sean Livingston, champion, bust, champion with a great shot. Bust. He resurrected his career. Devin yeah. Harris, bust. And you know what's funny? He was, was funny. five. Devin Harris was number five. That was a bad draft class. Went to Dallas. He went to Dallas, won the championship. That, that when, was when not they, a bad When they draft beat Dwayne Wade. Mm-hmm. So here's my he question. was their point guard then. So let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. What, what makes Devin Harris a bust? Devin Harris is a bust. Um, no all-star games. No yeah, all-star. he did. He, how many all-star games? You said Devin who? Devin Harris. From, from, Wisconsin? from Wisconsin? Yes. Bust. Journeyman. Is he not now, a how journeyman? would you be a journeyman? Is he, is he not a journeyman at the end of his career? No, I'm talking about throughout his career. No, he played every team he was with, he got traded after, or released. He, after he started getting injuries in like year 10. Bust before that, Dallas was not letting him go. Bust, are you are you kidding me? Yeah, I know Devin that, Harris does I, I not have a championship, a, by the way. I get it, he's from the city. I get it, he's from the city. Devin Harris has take away. Take away your yo yo personal feelings for these people. Bust. All right, future NBA players, if you're listening, if you come out top five, you better be putting up 30 and 10. Otherwise, Zeke is going to saying, dog I'm you not, in the barbershop. No, I'm not saying you got to put in 30 and 10. I'm not even saying that you have to be – I'm saying you have to be somewhat. I even say you got to be a superstar. I'm saying you have to be somewhat of an all-star caliber player. Y'all name all these people that ain't did nothing. Andre Iguodala was drafted number nine. I said top five. And y'all was just going in on me. I said, Iggy, at least Hall of Fame. No, 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 no. role player. No, no, no. Listen, if you giving Iggy the Hall of Fame, but you're calling some of these people bust, I question your basketball. I don't know why. I definitely do. Michael Beasley. That's a sad bust, but it's a bust. So back to your question, OJ Mayo. And again, sad but a bust. <laughs> Russell Westbrook. 
Well, obviously, it's not a bust. But he's at the end of his career. He's not doing anything. And now he's a journeyman because he getting. I'm saying what you said. You're right. I say your whole career, not him going to NBA Finals, All Star, All NBA team. Like the list goes on with Russell. Now, is it into his career? Is looking like booty? Yes, it's looking like dumpster fire. Throw it in the garbage. Kevin but Love. Kevin Love, of course not. No. Denari Gallinari. Who? Denali Gallinari. He was, just, he was just playing with uh I know bust. So so let's bring it back home. Scoop is too soon to give that man a bust title. Bust. Let him play out the season and let's see how he rebounds from his injury. I don't think bust. You, I don't think you really know what a NBA career is. Is Zion a bust? Close, but not yet. <laughs> Zion is out here playing John Wall. Ooh, that's a tough one. Why? He hasn't done anything more than half these people we named. But that's – oh, my God. He hasn't done anything. Why is that ours? Is oh, one. my God. Devin, Devin Harris had a better career than him, if that's the technicality of it. Did he do? Yeah. Half the players we named had a better career here's than my, him. Here's my thing about this. Here's my thing. Devin – who you said Devin Harris? Yeah. Devin Harris has how many? Has been on how many teams? A lot. In fact, they, they made a statement that he could get a – Real estate license because he owned a home in every Single town home. where he played. I think he had to play for the Bucks at one point too, didn't he? <coughs> he came for Bucks for like a minute. Yeah, yeah. So my thing about that is, I'm like, I'm calling these people bust and stuff like that. And this sounds a little harsh, but I'm taking away my personal feelings. Um, I just feel like if you're a top five player, you should have some type of career we can stand on. Some type of something like, oh, okay, he did this, this, and this. You talking about Andrew Bogan. Andrew Bogan was the number one. So what does your starter. career stats have to be for you not to be a bust? Chris Bosh um, said he's not a bust. I'll say Chris Bosh is not a bust. Before he came to Miami, 20 and 10, uh, I forgot what draft pick he was, but he was the man in Toronto. Was he by himself? Yes, he was. But I feel like if you are a person or if you're the if you're that guy on that team, then you're not a bust. Like and I, like him going to Miami was just him getting up with other superstars. He was a superstar in his self in his own right. Kevin Love was a superstar in his own right before he came to uh, Cleveland. Is Monte so, Ellis a bust? Close. So, but you can't sit here and tell me like all these guys deserve the the title of and buses when we when we put when you put bust with a player, you think oh he's the number one draft pick and you average in five points a game. But is there to me the criteria should be widened because we widen for everything else. Like the Hall of Fame in itself, we don't know what the criteria is for Hall of Fame. But all these people who are in the Hall of Fame and who who not in the Hall of Fame, like why is this person there? Why is this person there? Like why is this person? Why is this person holding the title for bust? That's because you're judging Hall of Fame off of NBA alone and not everything else. I'm judging it. Yeah, you're right. I'm judging it <laughs> off what you did in the NBA. I'm not judging it. And then on top of that, we can throw a little world play in there, but I don't care what you did in the Olympics. So, Kesey, to his question, is Scoot Henderson a bust or not? It's too early to determine that. Okay. Zeke, and you're calling him a bust. Bust. Capital B. I don't want to say capital B. I'll say bust. Just say bust. And this, Okay, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. So, and then we're going to dead the topic. But let's say Scoot Henderson... He's he turned this eight into twelve. He's he's go from twelve five boards a game, maybe three assists. He turned the thirty six to forty six. He's turned the nine point five into thirty. Is he not a bust? If this continues over two seasons, then yes. No, because I'm, I'm, he, actually, I'm saying he up he's up in all his stats. He's, I will call him a bust after year two. Simply because you were drafted because they thought you could change a franchise. Oh, you were drafted to be the franchise player. Wait, wait, so wait, if you wait. go in year two like that, then you have to start saying, <coughs> Scoot, I don't know that you are the man or can get this done. Then you can start having the bust conversations. But in 14 games in, that's harsh. Blake Griffin. Uh, I don't think Blake was a bust because Blake, Blake, was a bust Blake changed the franchise. Uh, he made Duncan relevant again. Uh, he made the All Star game relevant again, and he was a killer. They just couldn't win a title. He was a killer. 
So yeah, I'm not calling everybody bust, but some of these people you bring up bust. I mean, you have more bust than when you go back and listen. You be like, dang, I called him a bust. Kenya no. Martin, a, close. a good role player. Close. Close to a bust. He was drafted pretty high. People were dubbing him the next LeBron James. He was number one. People were dubbing Kenyon, Kenyon Martin. No, they were not. Because Kenyon the, Martin was never a a, a big time. Scorer. LeBron James. The, hold up. Was 12. Hold up. No, he wasn't. Wait, Kenyon Martin. He's on the Gill show. Yeah, I'm thinking of someone else. I'm sorry. Um, like Le- Kenyon Martin was 12. Yeah, you're right. You're right. The one. The one. I mean, player, LeBron was 12 when Kenyon Martin right. was in the league. You're right. I, I confuse the player. I'll let you know the player well, I'm talking Kenyon about. Kenyon Martin came 2000. LeBron came 2003. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Because he played with him and his daddy. I mean, his son. He, uh, but Kenya Mark was on his way out. Yeah. Kind of. No, he was drafted 2000. I want to say no. Elton Brand. I want to say no because he's been to like. I got some bigger, some bigger names for you. Elton Brand. Close. I'm sorry. They were calling Tyson Chandler. The next LeBron James. No, they no, were. Yes, they were. He because the, the movie, LeBron. he came in after LeBron. Tyson Chandler came Tyson, in after oh, Tyson Chandler. Tyson Chan- the the, the movie Coach Carter, there's a player in there called Ty Crane that they changed the name, but the character of the player that they held as the next LeBron James was based on Tyson Chandler. Tyson Chandler was seven foot. How? It, I don't know. People call, jo- you hear that from? people call it Jordan the next. People call LeBron the next Jordan. What did you hear What's your from? point? Tyson Chandler plays center. It don't I, matter. I, I, you can still be held the next great player. I don't think it's in terms of, oh, the next LeBron, you're going to play small forward and power forward. Tyson Chandler was probably in the league before LeBron. He wasn't. Look it up. I just told y'all. What year he was drafted? Move us on, man. Move us on. What year man. he was drafted? Uh, Let's find a draft year. Uh, I, I, I know. I don't know what this. Tyson Chandler was maybe a top five. Was he a top five pick? You're about to find out. Elton Brand. Bust or not. Bust. He was number one, 1999. I know, I know, I know. Michael Oliver Candy. Bust. Okay, I stand corrected again. It's not Ty Chandler. Oh, my God. Jeez. Chandler was in 01. Chandler was in 01. Not LeBron yeah. was 03. But it's, it's Chandler a bust. Yeah. Bro, he was one of the most dominant power forwards of that era, centers of that era. Zeke, come on, man. I'm not you are hard on people. I'm not going to do this with you. What? That's the same draft class as Paul Gasol. Same draft class. Well, Kwame Brown went number one, <laughs> thanks to Michael. Who else you got, Keezy? So we can, before we move on. Um, that is not Ty. You want to go to the Jordan, the Jordan class? Sam Bowie is a bus. Hakeem Olajuwon. No, obviously. Go. No, that's not. Charles Barkley. Go. <laughs> no. Go to his position. Otis <laughs> Thorpe. Close. He was good. Close. No, you Close. crazy. He was killing with the Rockets. He was killing in. He was killing in Houston. His school. He wasn't killing with the Rockets. He was a role player. Sam player. Perkins. Sam Perkins. Big man. Set it, uh, Ooh, you know what's funny? You know, Left-handed. I know. You know what's funny about Sam Perkins? Perk was a ball. I feel like I feel like his, be, him. Be careful. And, him and Thorpe. Their play declined when they went to the NBA because they were playing roles. Yeah. So I don't want to say they are bust. I want to say they're very. So then, close. why can't you say that about players now? That they roles because, change when they came to the league because their expectations are high. Do you think their expectation went high? Them coming in? Yes and no. Just to clarify, you were, with, you were playing with greater players. Just to clarify, here you go. Fun fact: in the movie Coach Carter, Ty Crane is based off of Tyson Chandler. That doesn't take away from being above. I'm just saying, people were calling him the next LeBron James in a movie. Read, find that article. Find that article compared him to LeBron James. That's they wild. were calling him the next LeBron That's James wild. based on their high school play. Tyson, Ty- Tyson Chandler, Chandler, Chandler in high school was a killer. And Tyson Chandler was in the league before LeBron. Exactly. How? I don't know. But remember, but remember, even when LeBron was in high school, players after him, he was better than players that were older than him. In ninth grade, people were calling LeBron the next big thing. It doesn't just because I'm older than you, does that mean I'm not the next whatever? Yeah. Why are you looking at me? I didn't say it. Yeah. Don't look at me. I didn't say it. Shoot, I'm let's, just, let's, I'm let's, just let's, giving let's, to you what they said. Let's, let's just move on. So, Scoop, you said he's a buzz. I said buzz. Kesey says too soon. I say too soon, man. Lighten up on me. I got man. one more class for you, and I'm done. Right. Seriously. We need to change the topic of this. I will. Buster, no. <laughs> Buster, Allen, not. Huh? 
Allen Iverson. Don't ask me obvious questions. He's Marcus Canby. Marcus Canby bust. I like Marcus Canby. I like you, man. Sharif Abdul Rahim. Bust. Injury. Bust. Can't call him a bust. Injury. Bust. Ste- Injury. Stephon bust. Marbury. Great role player. Good role player. No. You know what? Not a bust. Why? He what did he left do? The NBA. What did he do that he was so left great? The NBA. Before he was traded everywhere. He was he left the NBA though. But what did he do that makes him so great from all the other players that you call a bus? From from him besides the handles. The, the handles, him averaging 20 and 10 in the uh with 20 New and York, 10 win with Minnesota. You made that up. That man ain't never averaged no double double. Wow, you really Look it up. He never you, averaged no 20 and 10. He, he, averaged, he no, averaged no 20 and he 10. He averaged no double double. He would have been in every hey. MVP conversation. He has never been in an MVP conversation. Stephon Marbury? Steph, you said Stephon Marbury averaged a double double. When? Because he has never been in an MVP conversation. He has never led the league in any position at all. He had handles. He had handles and a bad temper. Oh, how dare you? Okay, so here we go. And he was traded for Ray Allen. Thank you, Milwaukee. So when he was in, okay, so here we go. He was uh, drafted 08, 09. Traded for Ray Allen. Rookie year, horrible. And he gradually got better. Did he average a double double? He averaged, I'm sorry, he did not average a double double. Well, you know. He averaged 21 and 8, 19 and 9, 20 and 8, 22 and 8. 20 and 8, it's 23 and 7. Still You're right. It's not a double. You know, it's right enough. It's not a double double. You're not right. a double double. I'm sorry. But you calling him a bust? I'm not calling him a bust. I said close. And you talk about me being a GM because I'm tight with money? Woo. I got one more. Anton Walker. And then I'm done. I don't think Walker was a bust. He's a champion. He made Stop Boston. He made champion, Boston. Man. He, made, that. he made Boston hey, relevant. He's at the end of the bitch. Champion. He, he made Boston relevant. And, I, and, I, and I, the only reason I brought this class up is because you know who was else in that class, right? Who? The Mamba. Oh, was he? Yeah. Close. Hey, hey, low key, real close. Kobe was real close. He was thirteen in that draft. But Kobe he was real thir- close. Hold to on. What? He was top. He was. He was. Top, he was number one. Thirteen of that draft. And and, cool. and he became a superstar like Giannis. Hey, hey, number thirteen. I said top five. And guess who else was right behind him though in that draft class? What? Pedro Stryakovich, mm. not a bust. Steve Nash, not a bust. It's not a bust. Jermaine O'Neal, not a bust. Close. Jermaine O'Neal, bust. But he's not top five. I'm talking about top five. Tone, if you're listening, top change five. the episode title to "Bust or Not." Anyways, um, let's move on. Jesus. So we got um, we got three teams that are currently. Um, Wait, I'm sorry. Before you go on, because you're saying bust or not, we have an injury <laughs> to report. Poor Zig is is out for a week or two uh, due to a calf injury. <laughs> and it's it, it's but it's funny because it depends on what you're talking about. Now you say I mean, poor Zig is injury prone. He is injury prone. He's a bust. Oh, God. Leo Long. Anyways, Minnesota Timberwolves are eleven and three. OKC Thunder are 11 and 4. Orlando Magic are 11 and 5. Do you see any of these three teams making the playoffs or play in? Too soon to tell. Too soon to tell. Because Minnesota, you can you can take a nap all you want. We know, we've seen teams that started one and did not in the playoffs at all. We've also seen teams go eight and I'm asking y'all because um, what I want to I want what I want to try to see is an eyeball test of these teams, and what do you think? Well, my only thing is I just want you to remember how last season went. Yes, yeah, the Lakers. Jesus, no, I'm not talking. I'm not even going to talk about the Lakers. Oh, okay, oh, I'm all ears now. The Utah Jazz, right? Good example. They were on fire to start the season. That first 25 games, like I said. It was Players smooth. play good. They do. But when you get to games 30, 35, mm-hmm. 40, 45, 50, that's that's when, he, that's when you feel it. That's true. That's when things get real. But I think – did they or did they not have like that's a lot of That's when you know who is built for the NBA. Do you know, did, they, did they have a lot of injuries, though? Oh, who? Utah. No. No. They didn't? No. They bust their team up shortly after, though. 
So I'm going to say this. I'm going to agree with Kesey 150%. I still think it's too soon, but out of all those teams, Minnesota has the best chance. I just feel like it's a cop-out when we – if you say this in game 50, or oh, they built for this, it's a cop-out. It's 50 games in. Either you, so I'm, By then, it's either put up or shut up. I'm going to tell you like this. We're looking at trades. Minnesota has the roster. They should have the roster to compete. They won't. But they have the roster to go the long haul. They should. Anthony Edwards is probably the most improved player. Not that that's saying anything because he's killing. They have their new version of the Twin Towers. Uh, I'm not a Gobert fan. I don't think it'll last. But Minnesota, out of all these teams, to me, has the best chance. And I wouldn't mind seeing it. I can see I can see OKC and um, Minnesota making making the playoffs. And I guess, but I don't see Orlando. I think they're still young. They have, they have some good pieces. They have some young pieces, but I don't see them making like the plane. I don't see them making no noise in the East. Yeah, I think they're just young and athletic and stuff like that. Who? Orlando. Orlando? Yeah, but as far as OKC and uh, Minnesota, I think they have the right. So they are third in the East right now. Mm-hmm. They've beaten the Lakers. Mm-hmm. They've beaten the Bucks. Who are you talking about? The Magic. The Magic. Okay, they're in play in. Let's beat quite a few teams. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, they're in in season tournament. So to say they are only what you say they only I said, making I a little bit of noise right now is a little harsh, ain't it? They're number three in the East. Eleven. And I five. just said I don't see them um, going to like the play in tournament. They're on a six six game winning streak. Yeah, but I, like I said before, they're young, athletic. They have a good team over there. I think they're still missing some pieces as far as like really? they got they got Joe Ingles as the um as their little veteran. The grandpa. Yeah. So like I, I feel like I'm not sitting here saying like, you know, um he they're go they're the team to beat. I'm just saying that they, you know, they got a nice, nice little squad. And in fact, the Orlando Magics are tied with the Phoenix Suns for the longest winning streak right now. Six game mm-hmm. winning streak. Mm-hmm. They beat the hot Pacers. Yep. Pacers are selectively hot. Though. They beat Denver. Mm-hmm. They Denver's Denver's going through some struggles. I think folks are they starting beat, to see. They beat Boston. Mm-hmm. I think folks are starting to see but, that but, Murray. Like said, and they just beat Boston the other night after they just put the collapse on the Bucks. I think people are starting to see how Murray is critical to the success of the Denver Nuggets. I think we all knew that. I didn't. I did. I didn't. Because that's why they haven't been. The one year they have a healthy Murray, they win a championship. That is not a coincidence. Now, does Murray get all the just do he's supposed to get? No. I think he gets a bonus this year if he makes the All Star game. Probably won't happen. He won't because he won't. Um, he's injured. He's not no, even I'm saying. eligible. He, he's not even it's eligible. It's an All Star game. Okay. But he won't even be eligible for first. And or, I'm teams. sorry, all NBA team. I see what you're saying. He's not eligible. And you have to play 65, 65 games. He's, he's been eligible. out. He's been out. He's still eligible. He's been out. We only in like game 10, though. They're in like game 17. Yeah. Next week, we'll be doing projections. Yeah. Mr. 20 and 25 games. Yeah. Um, but no, I I didn't I gotta start paying attention to Orlando now since y'all mentioned that. I see the record. Uh, but I gotta start paying attention to them. I don't think it'll last because the East is deep. Um, a lot of a lot of killers in the Easter conference. So we'll see. Time will tell. Time will tell. Um, and then before we get up out of here, um, we went to the bus game on Friday. We watched the Milwaukee Bucks barely get past the Washington Wizards. <laughs> and an interesting conversation came up, as it always does. Is Jordan Poole the best player on the Washington Wizards? Kesey says no. Kesey, would you like to give the people your reasoning? Kuzma's the best player on that roster. I'm taking Kuzma over pool all day. Now, here's my thing about that. I understand where you're coming from. I I do. You do? I do. Because Kuzma is probably the best all-around player on that team. But from what I've seen, it's Jordan Poole's team. This is Jordan Poole's team. What did you see? I seen him getting a lot of minutes. Okay, so let me ask you. Before you go any further. Here we go. I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. At the end of the game. He always I know what you're going to say. Oh, go ahead. Who was on the bench and who was in the game? One who was, got the shot and who didn't? 
one of one of just because he's a clown, and that's probably why he went in there for the last two minutes. He's a clown. Let's just call it what it is. Jordan Poole's a clown. And if I had the sound bite, I would. KG want him out the league. And my thing is, I'm not mad at him. I'm not I'm not saying he should be out the league. I'm just saying like Jordan Poole needs a reality check. And if the reality check is him getting sit down to the G League, that's the reality check he needs. But he needs a reality check to say, hey. You can't do what these guys do unless you produce us wins. I don't care you averaging 20 points a game. I don't care. I'm looking forward to talking. I don't care if you averaging 20 points a game. I don't care if you averaging 25 a game. My point is you can't do – if you can't produce with Ws and get us wins, you're you're useless. And to Zeke's point, here's what KG had to say. Bring a champ environment in here. You learned this in Golden State, nigga? No, this what you learned. this what you brought from? No, you ain't learned this. Bro, that's what I'm saying. You ain't learned you niggas this. over there professionals, bro. You got yeah. they got your ass out of there because you went and fall in line, bro. That's what I'm saying. Niggas like this don't belong in our league, bro. Yeah, in the league. League. He does not belong in the league as a he's the head of a team, P. Nah, I don't want my son out of no nigga like that. You see how he talking to teammates? Shut up, my nigga. This is my team. I got it. Nigga join up the joint, looking off, through the towel, snap, like, like, bro, you can say whatever you want about me, bro. I ain't never disrespected the game. I ain't never disrespected the position of being a leader. You know, they ain't got no... Bring a champ environment in here. So, you know what I'm saying? We apologize for the language. My thing is, like like KG said, I ain't going to say he he shouldn't be long in the league. I just think he needs a reality check. You He got money now. He got a championship. He, you, he act like anybody tell him nothing. Yeah, Instagram models. I did see him. <laughs> leave that, leave that alone. But anyway, but the point is, my thing about it is, and then my thing about it, he just needs a reality stupid, check. Dog. He just need a reality check. I'm gonna say it like this, Jordan Poole. But I don't think I'm sorry. I don't think he's. I think he's the best player on Washington with us. I'm sorry. Easily twice on Sunday. No, he's not. Kuzma is, and and gameplay shows who's the better. And like KG said, you come from a championship pedigree, and you come bring this. And which you, Golden State said he you was come, a critical piece of. You come bring this backyard alley basketball sh- to uh, Washington. Come on, Pooh. You you can be. He can be better than Kuz. But right now, currently in my books, he's not better than than Kuz. How many books you got? No, I'm just kidding. Let me ask you this: Do you think? Pool is doing this on purpose in the effort to get traded because he's also rumors are swirling that he is on the trade block. For but who wants that attitude? That's that's, that's the, thing. the thing. I don't know. Nobody wants that attitude, so he can't be doing it on purpose. He better be very careful. He better be very. He could careful. be one of those players that could be on the ban list, like OJ Mayo did. John Wall, Rashad McCants, Gilbert Arenas. Because everybody don't realize how good Rashad McCants was because his attitude sucks so bad. What's that other dude? Deion Waiters. So uh, going to Kesey Point, going to Kesey Point, Kuzma does average like 23 a game. Uh, Poole averaged 18. So let me say this. Hmm. And they averaged look- average about the they, uh, minutes, though. They average around the same amount. Let, let me say this. Okay. Jordan Poole is the better shooter. Kuzma- Can't say that because he's he tricking his – I was going to say a word, but I ain't going to say it on here. Kuzma has a better basketball IQ. I'll give you that. And Kuzma has a better team effort, and he makes people. They in the same age group, though, ain't they? They same age Not by much. Not, not by, by much. much but but my thing is, though, you can tell Kuz picked up some stuff from being under LeBron. Poole was in a championship pedigree environment, and it looked like he picked up Jack Diddley shit. Play, play with the to be great, honest. Play with the greatest. You play. Ever. You play with one of the greatest shooters in NBA history. Two of the greatest players. Right. Two of the two of the greatest NBA shooters in NBA history, probably. Who? In Clay Thompson, if Clay you really want to be, what? if you really want to be technical, yeah, and you come to Washington with that bull crap, you doing Steph lookaways. You disrespecting the game. Disrespecting coaches. You disrespecting the legacies that that you played under. It's almost like Steph and them didn't even put no game in your ear. Well, remember, Kesey, after he got traded, it came out that nobody really liked him. Because he got an attitude problem. But we see why now. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I was – it was unfortunate. I, I, I don't want this for Jordan Poole because he is a hometown kid. 
when his shot is on, is on. Clay Thompson gave him credit, saying he was a critical piece of that championship team. It. I haven't heard Kuzma's name in trade talks, but I have heard Jordan Poole's. So but you I know think- what the crazy part is about that, though? I was co-signing for Poole all this time, saying that they needed to get rid of Clay for him. Remember that? I do. I said if anybody gonna leave, it's gonna be Clay. Mm-hmm. I remember you saying that because we. And the thing about Poo it was, made me Poo, look like a fool, man. Who was the future? Like, who's the future? And that's what I. That's what I picked up. He was going to be the future. All he had to do was follow suit with Steph. That's it. That's all he had to do. Mm-hmm. You got the game right there in front of you. You got all the game knowledge right there in front of you to be successful. Because Steph didn't come in with high expectations. He did. He was in the same boat as you when you came in the league. Low draft pick. You know what I'm saying? Low draft pick. Ain't Nobody had no real big expectations out of you, but you both were good ball players. And he was in the G League for a minute. He's balling there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Injuries help you get your career started. Mm-hmm. And then here you go. You turn, you're turn. you going to almost get yourself blackballed from the NBA if you keep on the path that he's on. That's unfortunate, man. Do you think that's, that's unfortunate? Because do you think it's that it, serious? Well, his reputation right now, Granted, it's a lot of talk. There's no KG, who, in my opinion, was not a great person, but a great baller. You got KG saying that because usually KG is with the the Smiths, as y'all would say. Oh, I'm with the Smiths, right? You got KG saying that you're bad for the NBA. That says a lot, bro. That says a lot. I I don't like the way you put it. Put that together, but I get where you're coming from. Why you don't like the way I put it together? you, You say like KG of all people said it. Everybody I, I know because everybody know KG has had a, a, a horrible attitude too. But, but he, he never, never disrespected, disrespected the game. He never disrespected the game. He never disrespected his teammates. Was he hyped? Yes. Yes. Did he talk? Sh- yes. yes. But he would never was like it. Never. It never got to the point where he was like, "Damn, KG." Or it affected his play. That too. If a coach pulled, "Hey, KG, I need you to do this." He'd be like, "All right, cool, I got you." So I. That's why I'm like. That's why I was like, I didn't like the way you. And that's that, why I think right. KG's so offended because KG feel like. I'm in that category where I talk shit all game. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I ain't going to disrespect the game or the legends I play with. Exactly. It, it, poor, poor, poor play didn't get him kicked out of Golden State. His his mouth, his attitude did. And when you have a player like that where their attitude got them kicked out, where it got them in the league still, but they're – He's still making a hundred grand over a hundred, not a hundred grand, hundred million. Ain't he making a hundred million? You got a pretty fat contract. So – Guys like that, I don't say don't deserve in the beanie. Like I just feel like this is kind of harsh. I just think he need a reality check. I don't know what that reality check should be. I don't think he need a reality check. Mm. Um, I didn't have anything for Bucks talk, but if you guys would like to bring something up, this is the time. Uh, are we concerned that the Bucks are barely beating teams that they should be killing? Whether you win by one or you win by twenty, a win is a lucky win. I'm not doing a win. How long are you going to say that? For a, a team that's trying to figure things out and you're still winning and pulling it off, I'm with it. How long is it going You to were down 21 by the Boston Celtics smashing you all game. You get the game tied up and you only lose by three. I can live with that Without because missing. I know the heart in, in the um, – the, um, the intensity to get better is there. How many games? If they were getting smacked and they were losing, hey, Griffin, it's time to pull you into the office and have a talk. So what you're saying is you have hope for the future just based off because they're not getting smacked. Yeah, they're not getting smacked. It's a new environment with a new superstar. You got to you gotta give them some credit, man. How many? How many what games you? are you saying? Cool. All right, we're still work, we're still working things out. How many games? What do you mean they only lost five games out of no, twelve? I'm asking you, how many games in total? Actually, thirteen and five, ain't they? After tonight's win, that'll be thirteen and five. How many games um, in total are you giving them to figure it out? I mean, so, how many games are they giving the Clippers? Because they're seven and eight right now. They giving who? The Clippers. Oh, they've been through the top. They barbecue chicken. <laughs> they ain't got nothing coming. They so, can't beat the Lakers. They ain't got nothing coming. The, That's what I'm asking. I'm, 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 this is a serious question. This is not no joke. I'm asking you, how many games are you giving them to 
figure it out. Because they already played 17. So next week is your is your is your uh 20. Is 20, your 20, 20 by game games. 30 by game 30, the Bucks should be by game 30, the Bucks should be on the same majority of, on the same page. Okay, game 30. Are you saying top five in the Eastern Conference? I mean, they the are Bucks are two still, right now. They're three. I'm saying they're three. top five in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, they'll, they'll stay there. They'll stay in the top five. Okay, are you so I'm, I'm I'm trying to see. I'm trying to get this measure in here because you're saying 30 games like we're a winning record because they can be 30 games. They'll still be in one, two. Okay. Because I'm, I, they can be 15 to 15. 30 games. They'll see in the top three still guaranteed. Okay. So you saying 50, 30 games, top three. You're like, okay, I can deal with this. Finish the season, top three. Well, it kind of don't mean that, but we'll see what you're coming from. All right, Dre. But you, you feeling the same way? Um, I'm already somewhat concerned, but it's not a concern where we need to bust this thing up. I, I never thought Adrian Griffin was the guy. Uh, I still don't. Um, because it takes a special kind of coach to coach superstars. I think losing Terry Stotts was critical to our team. Uh, because he had that leadership of head coaches. Bucks don't have any head coaches on the bench helping coach these superstars. You, hold on, let me stop you right now. Tell me one accolade that Terry Stotts got that makes him credible as a head coach. Because remember, he was coaching in Portland, and they Portland went to the kept getting their ass whipped every year, and they went to the playoffs every year. But and two. they got their ass whipped every year. But they went the to the playoffs every year, but two. Because Dame natural talent. It wasn't because of his coaching. So, so, so when the when when they lose, it's it's not the coaches, but when they win, it's coaching. If you got a superstar like Dame in his prime, mm -hmm. and he can get you to the playoffs, mm -hmm. your coaches should get you to the third or fourth, get you to the uh the conference finals, right? They made the conference finals like once. They did not. They did make the conference finals. No, because they couldn't get past Steph. No, I'm telling you, they got the conference finals. Right so was Mike Brown a good coach when he coached LeBron? No, LeBron got them over the hump. I, I told you, I didn't think Mike Brown was a good coach until he uh, Sacramento. Was segment, Sacramento. Is, okay, is, he's a good coach. Is Phil Jackson a good coach? Of course. Man, stop. Jordan got him over the hump. Kobe got him over the hump. Shaq got him over the hump. Is Bud a good coach? A former two-time coach of the year. Bud's a good coach. Giannis got him over the hump. Because he didn't make adjustments. That's why they were losing every year. I don't before have, they got that championship. I don't have the energy. That's what I'm talking about right there. The that part the is what I'm talking about. You can tell the coaches who are coaches when it comes playoff time. This because they get you wins when ain't nobody even producing that well. Eric Spolstra? Look what Miami did. Good coach or not. Good coach. Even though he had LeBron and Dwayne Wade. Steve Kerr? They was in the NBA Finals last year. Steve Kerr? With just Great coach. They was in... Great coach. They was in the right. NBA Finals I mean, I with just Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo and a one-legged Kyle Lowry. At the AFC. And don't forget the immigrants. So don't tell me it ain't no coaching. <laughs> don't forget the immigrants. Which ones? <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> I am not laughing at that because I support immigration. So I'm going to say this. I support too. So hey. you see where I'm going when I say what coaching does different? So you care? So you Steph so, got him over the hump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna say I, I'm gonna say like you this. say what? I said what I said. Off this seat. I said what I said. Oh my god. You I'm said saying, what? Bro? I'm gonna say it like this. The luckiest son of a did I'm, you forget that they NBA? were winning games when they had what you call it as a interim coach? They had Mark, but as you said, coaches are supposed to get you over those first and second rounds. Steve Kerr got them over that multiple times. Mark couldn't get him past that first or second. So only, I'm gonna say this about he only Bucks. had one year to do it. I'm gonna say this about he had two. It, it, it all started when he let me stop. Mark was too much of a the he NBA blackballed IG, him hey, because I'm gonna say like I'm gonna keep it a buck. NBA, I believe blackballed him because he wasn't a house Negro. Yeah, y'all yeah. know what a house Negro is. Yep. Sit down, sir. Don't you talk about that. Be quiet. He spoke up against things that was against his spiritual belief, and he's been blackballed ever since. But there's a part two that I share with y'all off the hot mic because of some inside information of why he's been blackballed too. He needs okay, to go. We get it. Well. He needs to go ahead and he needs to make things right with Jerry West. I'm gonna no, leave it no. at that. I don't think he should. Anyway, the Milwaukee Bucks. 
I'm going to give them a little more time for chemistry, but adding Dane to me, I feel like we should be blowing people out, and we're not. Barely winning doesn't work for me. We just barely beat a 4-11 and team, and it was beating us by 30. But Dame is having a horrible, the worst start to an NBA career. He, I mean, worst start to an NBA season he's had since he's been in the league, and we're still in the top two. And Middleton, so team, just imagine when Dame really started catching fire and he really started catching his rhythm in game. About game 30 is when that might about, be next year. About 30, 35 is when you'll see Dame catch his rhythm. That and, might and, be next and, year. And I think the other part that from, might be next year. I just want to put that out there. It might be next year. And we all agree at this table. The championship of us. Well, what do you mean next year? I said by game 30, 35, he'll have his rhythm. Okay. Dame's just trying to find his rhythm, though. Right, right. I'm telling you, basketball is a rhythm game. It is. And until you find your rhythm, you're going to have struggles. Okay. Well, and, and, It and, took Giannis and, a minute to find his rhythm. And I'm well, going to say this. And I'm, I'm going to say this, too. I think, we, I think we're also seeing and appreciating what Chris Middleton brings to this ball club. Because all the games that we've been getting blown out, Middleton has not had either minutes or he has not contributing the way that we like him to. Well, I, I feel like I feel and like he, and, I'm sorry, and he looks hobbled. We like, saw him on Friday, and his minutes look forced to me. He's on the he's on the trade block. I heard his minutes look forced to me. I heard I heard is him and um, the, I heard the Bucks are auctioning it off him and a uh, Bochamp for a trade. That's, I don't, I don't, I don't that. like that. Keep Bochamp. My, my thing is this: Bochamp is what's going to help us get rid of Middleton. But I don't think he's good at to get who you really want in a trade. Hey, I like to fight in Bo Champ, though. You see, we like told it. Jordan Poole, like, man, back up, man. You a my guest thing, here. My thing is um, the Bucks don't have an identity. We have identity crisis, and you don't get that identity. If you don't have it starting off, I think this is lack of coach experience. If you don't have it starting off, you can get it later on in the season, but I just feel like it's it's the the longer it stays like this, the more it's iffy. And iffy teams don't make it to the NBA championship. That iffy teams don't do that. Iffy teams get bounced on the first round. Um, last year I didn't see it. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I didn't see it last year. You seen it. I think Drake seen it. You kind of just have dancing. I wasn't I, tap dancing. I just have dancing. My, no, only I thing, my only thing is Casey though, called it. Last year I, I said see it. I seen something wrong with the Bucks. This year I didn't tap dancing. You know I said I we didn't say? look like a championship team. And you were you saying no, crazy. You were saying who rolled you crazy. I t- don't say y'all then. First of all, don't just put it on me. Because I called it out at the beginning of the season. You No, you called it out after your 2025 game. Yeah. Dre called it out because we kept getting blew out by these good teams that we supposed to be beating or at least competing with. Yeah. I didn't. I never called it. I had faith all year. This year, my That's eyes. That's because we're fans. I, this year, my eyes are open wide, and I don't like what I see. And I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going to say and at this, this and table. This, and this is when you're going to oh, be wrong. Oh, hold up. I'm going to say at this table right now. At this point in the season, the Milwaukee Bucks are not the favorite to win the championship. They're not. Right They're now. not the favorite to come out the East. Right now, and I'll tell you this now. Mm-hmm. On November 26th. November 26th at 6.15, the Bucks will be in the NBA Finals. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Say it again. The Bucks will be in the NBA Finals. I said it on 11 26, 2023, at 6 15 p.m. I would need to be a part of that video. Now, while I would love to agree with my brother on November 26, I don't see as of today in the team I'm watching now, I do not see an NBA Finals pathway. It's not even recorded. Is it not? You put your thumb Dang. on there. Well, we have it on tape. I, I have it on tape. It doesn't matter. We, but like I said, as of right now, tap dancing around it. Like I'm I not tap dancing. But, but, but like I said, tap dancing. The Bucks. Shut up. I get a different vibe from the Bucks this year than I did last year. What vibe are you getting? And the vibe as I'm getting is, players are eager to get better, and you can see it in they play in a body language. Body language tells you a lot about a team. The Bucks' whole body language during this time last year was even off. They to me, their body language is saying, mm-hmm. "No, nah, it ain't saying that." We don't know because they still working. And they they working hard. It's just, it's just, it just like it, like, well, it, it feel like we, it feel like we missing know, passive. one, one thing in our rotation is off. I don't know who got to switch something. Jay Crowder going, but be it's, up for the but, next six days. 
But it's one piece in our roster outside of Jay Crowder that's not right. And we all know what that is and who that is. Who? Who? Chris Middleton. But this is the thing about Chris Middleton. I'm telling you now. That what? By trade deadline, Middleton Chris Middleton up. will not be a Milwaukee Buck. I don't believe that. I don't believe it. I don't think they're going to fully bust the roster like that. You're not going to bust the roster because you're not. Well, You just go for somebody younger that can shoot just as well as Chris because Chris can't defend. So here's the thing. So him defending days is over because I'm looking at it when we at the games. They're going right past Chris. Like them knees, them knees. Them knees. So, so Chris got to go. So, so why would thing. anyone want the knees, though? That's because he's still an elite scorer. How you going? You he's still an elite me. scorer. You can't sell that to nobody. Yeah, you can. No, you if you throw Bo Champ in there, that's what, I think you can. I think Bo Champ's the piece. The only person. You see what I'm now? You see why that? Why person. I said what I said when I seen that rumor? It makes total sense. The only person that we can but the get question that is, replace Middleton, we're not going to get. I don't know who that replacement is. DeMar though. DeRozan, buddy. Buddy Hill? Buddy Hill from Indiana. They're not going. Y'all want him? I do it. So I'm gonna say like this. Buddy Hill don't guard or don't guard like that enough nah, for me either. He I, don't guard like that, but he's a bucket. I'm keeping middle. And he only ten. six four. I'm keeping middle six six. Because the Bucks six, are small four. now. With lo- loss of holiday, Bucks are small. Did you see our lineups? We are small. Pat Connington, we need to do something with him. Okay. Shout out to three leaf company and everything you do in real estate. But the gameplay, no. Okay. I'm gonna say this about the Bucks. I don't see championship now. It's early. Kesey likes to give 25. I like to give all-star break. All-star break for what? Predictions. I'm going to still do it next week. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me. No, no, no. Ain't no time. I've been quiet long all-star enough All-star break. Because the first 40 have been played. The season doesn't really start until after the all-star break. Let's keep it a buck. For the playoffs, if you can't tell your team what they look like by all-star break, you can't tell by then. <laughs> you, obviously... It's on a downward spot. Well, I'm going to say it like this. I, I, I have high hopes for the Bucks. I, I'm i not liking what I'm seeing just yet, but I have hope. I don't like what I see. And uh, like we'll, we'll, like I said before, we'll put some predictions next week. This is past uh, Kesey. This is Kesey episode. That's what I'm probably going to name it the title. So, Kesey episode. So they got 25 games. So they got six possible trades for Chris Middleton out there. What are they? One is Ben Simmons. No. <laughs> Why Seriously? Not? Ben Simmons. Someone predicted that? No. 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 Oh God, no. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> number five. Number five is Gordon Hayward. Nope. No, he's washed. Bust. There you go. Not top five. Bust. Oh. What, what draft was he? He's, he's, he's like teens. Teens. He's teens. He's teens. He's teens. And. Bringing a former Milwaukee Buck back to Milwaukee. Michael Malcolm uh, Brogdon? Nope. Who? Tobias Harris. Nope. No, hell no. Tobias Harris was playing for Milwaukee? Yeah. Yeah, he got traded as a part. I forgot what deal he got traded on, but he's with Orlando. He he played for us. We drafted him. Also, Gordon Hayward was the ninth pick by Utah, by the way. Not top five. Also, yeah. Number three is. Andrew Wiggins. I'll take, take that. It. Washington is really, I mean, Washington. Golden State is really in, interested in Bochamp right now. Seriously? Yeah. Be Who out are your you? sources? Don't worry about that. I got mine. <laughs> I'm going to lie. Bochamp, Bochamp can might flourish. be the player of the future. He can flourish in the right system. They, He's flourishing here. Also, they are, Not cons- as much as he they are also considering a deal with Portland again. Who? Bringing in Jeremy Grant. No. No. I'll take Wiggins, though. And the number one, probably who the Bucks are going to trade for, is DeMar DeRozan. I've heard that. They just wait in on Chicago. That. They really waiting on Chicago to pull that trigger on that deal. I like that. But here's the thing. DeMar DeRozan's a rental, though. His, his contract's stay. up. He'll stay. He'll stay. No, he's stuck. He'll stay. No. But at the end of the, the Lakers day, don't want him. But at the, the end Lakers of the Lakers don't want him. They had opportunity to get him and they didn't want him. But they nobody go, wanted him. That's what I'm saying. Nobody wanted him. Come on here, get your mind right, get a championship. I'll take that. So you'll trade Chris Middleton for Demar Derozan? No problem. With the blink of an eye. Even if you got to give a bow champ? Yep. 
No. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Because you can always make Bo Champ another offer a few years down the line. Because hey, he's still Bo- on his rookie deal. He got two years left here's on it. Here's the thing. This, here's the thing. Who said we was going to offer Bo Champ an extension? Not no big one. Oh, we'll offer him an extension. Not a big one. We'll offer him an extension. How much? Whatever he's eligible. He won't get the max for his class. I know he won't get the max, but how much are you talking about? How much are we giving Bo Champ? They'll give Bo Champ 15 to 20 million a year. What? Or let me tell you something. Bo Champ reminds me. Ten year, no, 10 million, three years. Bo Champ reminds me of how Giannis started. No. Let me finish. When Giannis started, he was not that great. He Le- wasn't. He was not that great. Bo Champ in his second year is better than what Giannis was in his second year. I get it. Bo Champ. Dame has already said it. In one on ones, Bo Champ has beat them all. Yeah, I, I tell people you're a nice guy too. But He's I beat know them nice all. Too. My bad. He's beat them all. I'm not saying Bo Champ is better than anybody right now, but you can't be like the Los Angeles Lakers and give up all your talent early. If Bo Champ is here and he wants to stay, pay that man and let him flourish until he's in the start. Not no hundred million. I didn't say a hundred million. I said I say, fifteen to twenty a year. I say. I say how many years? I, I give say, him a three. Give him a four year deal. I say three years, sixty. I'll take it. That's all. That's what the Bucks probably would offer him right now. But let him go flourish in the lineup where he'll get more minutes, like Chicago for a year, and then when his when his contract is up, put an offer out there because either Chicago got to match your offer, mm-hmm. or either Bochamp take your offer. This what I, I know but this, this but I would have this discussion with Bochamp. I'm gonna give you a chance to go to <laughs> Chicago. We're gonna trade you with Middleton to Chicago. You're gonna get a lot of minutes. You're gonna be able to see if you can flourish or not in a higher role. Mm-hmm. If you do, we're going to make an offer that nobody else can resist, nobody else can pay, and bring you back here on next to Giannis. I don't see that. I see that's that. how I would look at it as a GM. If I'm Milwaukee, that's how I'm looking at it. And, and sports writers are calling Marjan Bochamp the most attractive trade piece out there right now. I can see that. I just don't see what y'all are saying as far as him. Being he gonna get paid. He gonna get a bag. Number Watch. one, he's not getting paid. Number two, I also don't. Well, him getting traded, no problem, because we need somebody who can shoot, who can shoot like Middleton, and that would be Demar Derozan. Um, this has been a, uh, another episode of the Ninety Four Feet Podcast. You can catch us on all social media platform: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, eventually TikTok. Uh, you can also catch us on stream, all streaming platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Spotify, Google, Spreaker, and SoundCloud. So shout out to my brother, Dre. It's always great to be in the house with the with the basketball family. Shout out to my brother, Kesey. It's been another one, good one, good people. Agree with us? Probably not. This is the 94 Feet Podcast. Peace.